Hi, glad you could join me today. I'm in Exodus chapter 3 in our study of, uh, of the scripture today. In this particular passage, it's a very significant passage. Uh, Moses is in the wilderness, in the desert, taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. And he comes to a particular place where uh, suddenly he sees that there is a bush that's burning. And somehow he recognizes that the bush is not consumed. Now normally if you have a fire, the things that you put in that fire get eaten up by that fire and you're left just with ash. But in this particular case, Moses looks on this and he says... That, that bush isn't being burned up. I wonder why. So he looks more closely and he listens more co closely. And from the bush, a voice comes out and it's the voice of God himself. And he wants to send Moses back to Egypt. Now in the exchange that Moses and God have at that particular time, Moses asks God what his name is. Is his name Baal? Is his name Ashereth? Is his name one of these gods, pagan gods of that particular era? And he says, no, my name is I am that I am. Now, of course, that was, that's the English transliteration and translation of that. But uh, we would say that in, in the Hebrew language, it would be the name Yahweh. Now, it's important that you understand that the Hebrew language does not have any vowels to it. And so the letters that form this particular word, this name of God, are Y, H, W, H, if we were to transliterate them into English. We would call that Yahweh, sometimes Jehovah. That's the personal name of God. Now, it's, it was so important to the Hebrews that uh, after the time of Moses and he gave the Ten Commandments, one of those commandments was not to take the Lord's name in vain, that they would be very careful not to use the personal name of God in their particular language. And so what they did was to substitute. And instead of using the word Yahweh, lest they do it in any kind of flippant or uh, unholy kind of way. They use the word Adonai, which is translated into English, Lord. Now, what's important here for us is that if you look through the Old Testament in your Bible, the, it's probable that your Bible will sometimes use the word Lord and say capital L-O-R-D the O-R-D in lowercase letters. But there are other times when it's referring to the Lord, the God that we worship, and it will have capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now, if you've never noticed that before, go back and look at that in these passages. You can find it here in Exodus 3 if you don't find it anyplace else. And whenever that particular uh, expression is used. Whenever that convention is used in the English Bible, it means that the Hebrew word is the word for Yahweh, Jehovah, and it's a reference to the personal name of God. Now, God has many names in our day as well as in the time of Moses and throughout ancient history. And, and these names can express some various different characteristics of God. But whenever it is the personal name of God, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it's referring to his person. Now we transliterate that, or translate that rather, into English by saying, I am that I am. God is saying, I am the ever-present God. He is never, he's never obsolete. He's never old-fashioned. He is the God of the Hebrews during the time of Moses. He was the God of the Hebrews during the time of David. He was the God of the Hebrews during the time of Jesus. 
He was the God of the Christians uh, during the time of Paul and up through our day. And whenever you see that particular convention, you know that that's what is being referred to. He might have other names in other places, but that's what he's referring to. He is always and ever present. You can trust that. You can trust him. You can come to know that one just as Moses did and just as these other great saints have done in the past. And that's how he has revealed himself to us. What a privilege that we can call him by name. You know, if I met a great dignitary, if I were to meet uh, the President of the United States, if I were to uh, somehow be able to be transported back in time to meet Abraham Lincoln, I would call him Mr. President. It's not his name, that's his office. And it's a proper title. But God asks us and encourages us to approach him by name. And that's what he says to Moses. My name is I am. And when Jesus was confronted with the, well, by the Pharisees, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus himself is God. Let's pray. Father, we praise you that you've revealed yourself in this way. May we understand more of who you are, of your present character, your ever-present love for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.